Hi everybody, it's Terry and I'm back with another video that I hope will prove very helpful. What I want to talk about is the traditional track lock-ons that come with most starter sets. And this is a Lionel lock-on. And the way these work is, as you see, they clip on to the outer, one of the outer rails and the center rail. And then they have two wires that go to the post on your transformer. Okay to use if it's just going to be a temporary layout like people sometimes set up during the holidays or whatever that you're going to be taking down again. But the problem with that is over time, putting it together, taking it down, they become loose. Either here or here. And they, they don't, even at best, they don't make good electrical connection. Another problem with them is, if I just say, this, this is a piece of Lionel's. 027. This is an original piece of Mark's 027. Now watch what happens when I apply the Lionel lock on. Doesn't fit all that well. It fits, but it's quite loose, and that you see how it's got a lot of play. So you're not going to get good electrical contact. You're going to have areas when the train goes around here where it's going to bog down. It may trip the E unit causing the train to suddenly go reverse. It just isn't going to work. And the, they aren't very efficient on a, if you're going to have a large permanent layout, you'll find that you're going to have to be putting a lock on every couple of feet and running wires to get it going. There is a better way, a much better way, and it looks nicer. And the current flow from the transformer to the track, and then, of course, the locomotive is much more efficient. And that's what I want to talk about today. And that is a process called hard wiring. And what that means is you take your feeder wire such as this, one of these, one, two, and this is bell wire, and you solder them directly to the one to the inner rail and one of the outer rails, and that then of course then run your feeders to your transformer. Is much better performance your trains will run better your layout will look better and so let's get to it on how to do that first thing you want to do is of course strip and tin your wires i have the this one over here is already prepared it's tinned already on the end so we're going to do the other one we're just going to dip this you take your solder flux and dip it in there a little bit of flux on that and then take your soldering iron and it's going to get that flux then to melt on the wire it'll smoke a little bit try not to breathe that smoke in it's not good for you now once you got that tinned i mean the flux on there and get it back in the can view of the camera you're going to tin it with solder. Uh, a good way to do that so you don't have to have a third hand is take your spool and set your solder up like that. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to tin that now. And it's going to move that solder back and forth, slowly move that wire and get that solder on the wire. Thin coating of tin on there. This will help to make a good solder connection. Okay, and you set that aside. Take your track. You see this way I was shown. Flip it over, and it's very important that the area you're going to solder is nice and clean of any oxidation or you're not going to be able to get a good solder joint. Solder won't stick. So that's what this green scotch brake pads for you. Take that. And you don't want to try to skimp on this for time. You want to take your time and get it really good. Now you might even have to use some sandpaper depending on how the track looks. You got to get it nice and shiny. Shiny. 
so you can get a good solder connection. I had worked on this a little bit before I started filming, but you can see how shiny that is right in there. That's what you want. Then you're going to take your flux again with a toothpick. You just put a small dab on each rail where you're going to attach your wires. You want something like that. You can just see that. And you want that's what you're looking for. And you're gonna melt that with the solder. You all know, heat it till it starts to sizzle and boil. Put the solder on there. This doesn't take long. You see it start to liquefy. And do the other rail. Okay. Once that has melded, you're going to take your solder and put a tiny pool of solder, a small pool of solder on each rail. Now let me, let me. It's going to heat your rail up. Apply your solder. I'm going to get a small puddle of solder on there. Okay, basically what you're looking for is something like this. Now then, side our side, you're going to take one of your feed wires, and we're at the end that you tin, and you're going to press that right into the solder that you, um, where you want to, and then heat that up, so, and then press that right into the solder joint. Here. 
do left-handed. Just want to melt that solder right in there. That cool. Pardon me. You're going to do your other wire the same way. So you're just going to press that right down into that solder. Now basically you're going to have something like this, which you then can run these wires to your transformer. Now, to show you how well this works, I actually have the track on my layout hardwired, so we'll close this flux up lid on that so we can move the table and we'll take the phone over there and I'll let you see a brief demonstration of how well that works take the phone off the tripod one over the layout zoom out a little bit whoops I want to zoom out okay we'll turn power on And as you can see, we have nice, consistent power all the way around without any real problems. And this has been hardwired. If you look closely, you'll see here no track lock-ons. It is hardwired. Now, the reason you only see one wire going as far back is there are actually two. The other ones are on the other side. I have mine hooked up in what's known as a bipolar hookup. You can also do it the way I showed you in the video, uh, two wires on the rail. But it does work. The track runs much more efficient. And it really does improve the look of the layout because you don't see all those lock-ons everywhere. So I just want to demonstrate that and how you can hardwire your layout and get better uh, current flow to all parts of the layout. This works really good, especially if you have a bigger layout. Uh, so that's what I want to demonstrate. I hope you found it informative and helpful. And as always, I want to thank you for watching.